Get closer, get closer. That's my, I always feel that people are too far away. Um, I think that uh, it's too easy to look backward and say, oh, back in the day, everybody had it together and people knew what to do. Especially what young people you? like you have a tendency to look at the 60s or the 30s or the you know, um, abolitionist moment and say, ah, that's when we know what to do. But the fact is, it's not, it, it, it isn't true. The truth, the truth is that we You're are always back. living in You've history and history always Forever. presents new challenges. The myth of the 60s is in part a myth that's invented to erase the 60s. Oh, no. So we all celebrate no. Martin Luther King and have a breakfast in his honor. But the Martin Luther King that we celebrate in January and have the prayer breakfasts bears no resemblance to the Martin Luther King who suffered and struggled and died. And no resemblance. Um, you, you know, the, the mythical die. Martin Luther King had a dream, led a bus boycott, um, won a Nobel and went to sleep. The real Martin Luther King is a person who was an angry pilgrim, an activist for only 13 years of his life, and always learning Don't the next like thing. Don't talk like one of them. You're not. You read his speeches from 65 to 68. You would not believe. You would think you were reading Malcolm X because of the anger, because of the um, clarity of his uh, of his conclusions. Nervous. In 1968, King, denouncing the war in Vietnam, said. I regret to say that my government is the most violent force in the world today. And he said, we need a revolution. No going Those back. are King's words. You've we need a revolution, things. a revolution Forever. in values so that we can have a revolution in fact. And he, and he condemned the, what he called the three evils, militarism, racism, and materialism. Those, Those three awful, evils are with us today. Really and those three the evils, were. if King were with us today, he would still be campaigning against. The beautiful thing about a figure like King is he learned and grew and adapted and struggled. But at the time he was like living, he was ignored, dismissed, opposed, and then murdered. And then if we... we, we do this. Now let's talk about the question of revolution. I, I think the danger... I don't think it's a danger in anything you've said, but I, when I look at activists today, I see two dangers. Entertainment. One is the danger of um, taking yourself not seriously enough. That Even is to say, like me, that's cold. the demonstrations we had on fe February 15, 2003, which were the largest anti-war demonstrations in the history of the world, and certainly the largest I'd ever been involved in, and they weren't in the 60s. They were in the 2003. The old, the, this was a tremendous demonstration worldwide. The only problem with the demonstration, from my point of view, was that the organizers said, this is the demonstration that's going to stop a war. Never start with the head. The, there, the there was a miscalculation there, you because can't... what they didn't understand, or at least in their rhetoric, didn't explain, as good teachers would, they need you right is now. that the, the momentum for war well, was irreversible. Bush was going to war. Whatever we did on March 15th, Bush was going to war. So the trick wasn't to stop the war from happening before it started. The trick was to mobilize the opposition, demonstrate it on the ground, and then build the honest, true movement that we could build based on the fact that we were right. So now there's all this kind of breast beating from the Democrats who are a bunch of hypocrites uh, and from some liberal Republicans that says, gee, we didn't know. We knew if you attended Damn one teaching in, in, in 2003 me. and listened to one expert who knew one thing, listen to Rashid Khalidi. You don't have to go over to Noam Chomsky or, you know, listen to Rashid Khalidi, listen to um, uh, uh, John Mearsheimer. They knew that there were no weapons of mass destruction. Uh, Baraday gets the um, Nobel Prize, um, uh, the head of the atomic uh, you know agency. What? That He had said all along that there were no weapons of mass destruction there. So we knew it was a lie at the time. Very One of the choices that, that uh, I have still used to say in the 60s, and he was a great pioneering journalist, an honest journalist, um, doing, doing the work that Jefferson asked journalists to do, which was to... Uh, you know, to uh, make the make the comfortable uncomfortable and bring comfort to the marginalized. See, I'm not a monster. But I have Stone used to say, you have to understand that the government gets up in the morning and starts lying, and they don't stop lying until they go to bed at night. See, if you understand walls, that, you get a compass on how to how to how to organize an opposition. Joke. When you know history, you know that governments lie, as I have Stone said. Last very long. What, the way Miles Horton put it, another great educator. Hey, 
was in any social movement, there are mountain times and valley times. In the mountain times, everybody knows what to do. When the demonstrations are happening and the Little movement is building you. spontaneously, I like people that. who of goodwill figure out what to do. In the valley times, you have to organize, you have to study, you have to make your documentary, you. you have to write your books, you have to, do, you have to pull people together because you know that a mountain time will come again. Uh, one of the things we can learn from history is that history is not only a history of things in People are moved by the things, that, by, by the uh, events and the experiences yeah, that touch freak. them or oppress them. Like me. And so the fact that there's an immigration movement, an immigration rights movement, spontaneously rising up, in my view, is an undeniably great thing. It's a, it's a gesture towards freedom, just like Stonewall was a gesture towards freedom. The only sensible like, way to live in this world uh, is Just like every rules. other moment that I've been privileged to witness or experience or participate in. These things are tremendous, but what makes your role, Killing and maybe my role, choice. important, and here we get back to pedagogy, is connecting the dots. Oh, you need to sure. see you just take off that the oppression of immigrants really in this are. country is linked mm -hmm. to racism, is linked to gender inequality, is linked to um, the attack on gay people. These now things are not separate time. events. They are actually connected, and a radical fine. analysis <coughs> understands the connections and begins to help people make those connections. If you can make the connections, well, and if you can problem. see the ways in which the larger system, the larger economic system, the motor of society, the larger cultural and social system, the way in which she these things are rigged of me. against most of us, once you can see that, you'll never be able to see the world again in the same way. <laughs> I'm a prop in her movie. No, you, you complete me. Get closer, get closer. That's why I always feel like we're too far away.